Thanks very much, Kian Corla. Uh, Minister, this uh, again relates to a decision by Fall to Ireland in this instance to shut its office at Dublin Airport a mere two years after they shut down their office in Terminal 1, meaning that we now or will have no tourist office in the country's biggest airport. And, you know, it's becoming a bit of a trend when you consider that they also shut down their office in Newgrange and moved the staff to the city centre. Airport staff now are being told they have to move to the city centre, making it a very Dublin centre city centrist organisation. And I'm wondering how Fall to Ireland are achieving their objective of developing Ireland as a destination if they're not even located in our main airport and what your thoughts are in that regard. Minister O'Donovan is two minutes. Um, thanks, uh, Les Count Corlo, and thanks, Deputy Daly, for, for the question. Um, I'm aware that Fall to Ireland plans to close its uh, tourist information office in Terminal 2 Dublin Airport, and I understand from Fall to Ireland that this decision follows a review of the engagement levels there and the nature of the queries. The management of the Tourist Information Office Network is operational for, for the management and board of Fall to Ireland and in line with its functions is set out in legislation and is something that, in which I have no role. Um, so what I have done is I have asked Fall to Ireland uh, to prepare for me uh, directly a reply, uh, which I will forward to the Deputy, but in the meantime I am meeting the CEO uh, of Fall to Ireland uh, next week on a scheduled uh, meeting anyway, he is newly appointed. And this is an issue in relation to tourism information offices in general uh, that I want to discuss with him because it's an issue close to my own heart in my own constituency. Um, a tourist information office was closed but it reinvented itself uh, and it was, it was uh, um, redeveloped. So there is a, a, a precedent I think for uh, how we do things differently in relation to tourism information offices. But what I will do Deputy Daly is having met the, the CEO next week I'll revert to you directly uh, and I'll give you an update as regards the uh, rationale behind the decision and what it will mean for, for the employees and for tourist information in Dublin Airport. Well, I'd like to thank the Minister for that. I think it is quite important. I mean, two weeks ago, 13 members of staff were summoned to a meeting in an airport hotel and told that the office was being closed and all the staff were being moved out in June. June, the start of the summer season in an airport which we know from our previous discussion needs an extra runway to accommodate the volume of passengers that are passing through its doorstep. And it seems utterly bizarre that there is no tourist office to be located there. And it actually feeds into the question you responded to with Deputy Nocton, is there is a very much now a Dublin centre centric organisation being developed around Fall to Ireland, which is inherently dangerous. I would put it to the Minister to put it to Fall to Ireland that their facilities at Dublin Airport were given to them for free by the DAA. They were such a vital linchpin, if you like, in smoothing the passage of, of uh, passengers through that airport, making their uh, welcome in Ireland a very much Cade Mila Falcha uh, venture that the DAA didn't even charge them for those facilities. So I think it's something well worth hanging on to, and I would really stress that the Minister would raise those points in the context of the holistic development of tourism for the entire island of Ireland, not just Minister. Dublin. Minister, one minute. Um, thanks, uh, Les can, can I set your mind at ease? First of all, Deputy Daly, this, uh, the, the development of tourism in Ireland is far from Dublin-centric. Uh, Ten million people visited Ireland, uh, the island of Ireland last year, and you know yourself that Ireland's ancient east and the wild Atlantic way have been phenomenal successes. Um, but Falcher Ireland have 28 tourist information offices uh, across the country. And there is also a network of over 40 that are uh, volunteer in basis uh, and, and have a different management structure and a different relationship. So I, I would contest uh, you know, that it is not Dublin-centric, but certainly I think tourist information offices have a role. Uh, it's, I suppose what I want to do is to understand, first of all, uh, Fall to Ireland's rationale and the proposals in relation to the staff and what it will mean for tourists coming through Dublin, of which there is absolutely, I can get, categorically tell you, no shortage of anybody that's trying to get a room in Dublin, and that's a fantastic thing, will know that there are no shortages of tourists in Dublin. But what, from my benefit, from my point of view, uh, one of the things I am anxious to do is to understand Fall to Ireland's approach in relation to this. So that's why I'm meeting the CEO, but also to see what are they going to supplement it with in terms of technologies, uh, apps that can be downloaded and things like that in the absence of a tourist information point at the airport. And to understand the effectiveness of that tourist information point in the first place as well, and the footfall and the number of people that were actually availing of it. And I think once I have that information, I'll be able to, to revert to you in greater detail. Then supplementary. 
Minister, for that, and I, I think it is something we will return to. I mean, I think for the staff involved, it's obviously a, a devastating blow that these people have to move from areas in North County Dublin or, or routes on the M50 into Dublin city centre. It's very inconvenient for them. But more importantly is the skill set um, uh, the skilled workers who have a great knowledge of airport facilities, of local transport network, of countrywide tourism, being located at the first point of arrival for millions of passengers every year. Uh, they are and should be the first port of call. They have played an exceptional role. I mean, their offices could be decorated with the amount of, of thank you letters that they get. And to me, it leaves a huge gap, actually, at the first entry point. So it will be interesting to see what fall to Ireland say to you. No doubt it's some part of rationalisation or restructuring, but it might be worth your while to maybe meet delegations of the workforce also, or indeed the DAA, because I come back to it, that this is a facility provided on our first point for free. It doesn't cost fall to Ireland anything. They don't pay. Donovan. Let's go for it. Well, look, I, I, since I was appointed, I think, age with the, a lot of the airports across the country and in the points of entry for, for Irish tours in relation to what the tour, or tours into Ireland is in relation to what tours are actually looking for. Uh, and there is a change in how tourists are um, behaving in terms of how they want to access information. And to be quite honest about it, in a lot of cases, that's your tourist office now. Uh, and we have, to, you know, we have to reflect the reality as well of the numbers of people that are actually availing of these services. But you're right, we also have to reflect uh, the, the uh, skill set that's available within the staff of Falch Ireland, who do a very good job across the country. And Falch Ireland have been, you know, they've developed a huge range of products, whether it's the Wild Atlantic Way, as I said, our Dublin, a Brit of Fresh Air as well, uh, in terms of marketing. Um, so, you know, my first priority is to understand the rationale for the decision. As I say, we had this, we had this in our own constituency. Deputy Collins will know it as well in Adair. Uh, and, you know, the tourist information point was changed and the approach to it was changed. Uh, and there are examples of that across the country. So there may be opportunities for the DAA as well. And I'm due to meet the DAA in the context of the development of tourism. There may be an opportunity for the DAA. Uh, and I certainly will raise that with their CEO as well when I, when I meet them. And I will uh, at the earliest opportunity, Deputy Daly, give you a full reply as to the progress that I've made. Thank you. Question 29, in the name of Deputy